Hello and welcome to another video today. I will be talking a bit about peggers, how they work, and um, about pegger identifiers and what conclusions you can draw from the detections. So, um, the reason is that I recently saw a video where the person said something like mm, PRD did not detect any pegger in this file so it's not pegged um, or I saw I had another person telling me I followed your tutorial and unpacked the file and after that the packer identifier still detected the packer so I probably didn't unpack it so well, um, it's a bit confusion there what these packer identifiers actually do and what they look for so but before I explain to you uh, the inner workings of them, let's take a look at pairs in general. So this image is my part of my master thesis. I, I created it to to include it there, um, and it shows uh, different types of pairs and what they do. Now, initially, pairs were just used to compress files to reduce the size of an executable so you can save a bit of space um, for instance upx is a compressor yeah you call these kind of um, packers compressors they take a file as an input they apply a compression to that file for instance um, like like archive archiving and like zip um, and then they put the file into a so-called software envelope or stub and the stub is um, it contains code to unpack this file again and then run it in memory now there are also other types um, with different purposes for instance the crypto the crypto is there to uh, it will it will apply an encryption to the file, and it does this so it's harder to get the original file back, and also to evo evade any antivirus product detection. So they either they are either used to make it harder for reverse engineers to reverse the file, or they are used to evade any antivirus detection, and yeah, this can also be legitimate or not legitimate, depending on the use. The protector does both, it will compress and encrypt the file. Um, and it should compress before encryption, because otherwise the compression doesn't work. Um, the bundler, it's an entire diff entirely different uh, categorization, so it's put in here. Um, the bundler will take several files and put all of them in one software envelope, can also be more than two. Um, and the software envelope then it will unpack both files and run them at the same time. So you have one executable, you click it and l several executables will be run. This is very good for um, any, any company who sells or provides software um, they can just deploy the software more easily if they create one executable out of uh, the several co yeah, modules that they have. But uh, malware authors also use this, and I think they call it more commonly binder joiner. Um, they use this to bundle a legitimate program like uTorrent with a malware like a vector or or remote control software so they will do this and then make you think that this is a legitimate uTorrent file and there's actually also another part that you don't want so that's how packers work and what uh, the the uh, packer identifiers do is they look for um, some things in the software envelope this step they they look for any string or uh, code piece 
that is typical for that software envelope. So that way they can detect which packer was used because each packer has its own software envelope. So now the malware authors they m they might use these widely spread packers, but most of the time they use underground cryptos. They use uh, self-made packers. They use not widely known packers. And for that reason, you will also very often see that PID cannot detect the packer of a malware sample. Let's check this. This is uh, the packed lucky sample that we unpacked in the other video, and they do not detect anything. So, why is that? Now, PID is based on, on signatures in a database. So, let's see. There's they have this folder in here, userdb.txt. This is um, one. This is a signature database that you can fill yourself, and you will find also um, uh, databases from other users you can download. So you have a few more signatures than the ones that PID already has. Now, each signature consists of three parts. One is the name. Um, then there's the actual signature. It's a byte sequence that uh, the file, the packer identifier, is scanning for on the file, in the software envelope. And you have these in hex values and also wildcards. The wildcards can stand for any value. That means the byte at this position can have any value, no matter what, and the signature will still match. Then there's this EP only. It means please only look at the entry point and if this is set to true they will only look at the entry point if this is set to false they will look everywhere in the file which may um, result in false positives okay that's what PID does um, I'm not sure if they uh, use any more uh, anything else for the internal signatures than this format but yeah die um, the part that checks for the signatures that you see here um, they do not have just these uh, let's say byte sequences they they have whole scripts that they can use in this case you have uh, th this would be the same as EP only is true um, they compare a byte sequence at the entry point with, with this one and the wildcards in die they are dots so this way they can hear even distinguish the version and say well it's this version they can also do more complex stuff they can look in this case for a, a section name a perplex section name for a C project and say well okay then it's 1.x version of this picker. So this is a bit more more fine grained, more control you can have and maybe more checking you can do to verify that this signature is correct. So it's nice um, that you have these scripts. So that means these signature identifiers they can only detect what they have in their in their database and I think malware authors or the ones who sell cryptos and pickers to malware authors they create new ones every day so you cannot keep up with that it would be a task like I mean that's what the antivirus products are already trying to do they um, uh, often c they just detect the software envelope of the cr the malicious cryptos um, the the ones that are only there to evade detection and that's already difficult enough because they are made in a way that uh, it's hard to find any string in here in the software envelope that you can use because they are they are changed um, every time you pack a file and yeah for that reason you will probably never see a detected easy find such 
um, or let's say most of the custom cryptos. And that's what we call them their custom. Yeah. There are other means to detect if a file is encrypted or not, and I will explain that in a different video. Um, once and I already showed one, that's the entropy, but it's only one part of, uh, of that, and you should always take into account a lot of more information before you make the decision. But yeah, I will keep it, uh, I will explain this in my next video. So thank you for watching. Have a nice evening.